Now it is possible to have too much chi in the sense that you don't have enough jing to uh, to contain it. So, like I was talking about before, if you're burning the candle at both ends, that's you're using your chi inappropriately, which eats up your jing too quickly. Um, often, some people who take ginseng have negative effects, or some of these other herbs that are um, designed to increase the chi of the body, um, they'll have an, a negative interaction or reaction from them because they haven't built up a substantial amount of jing or some other aspect of their physiology is out of balance, which results in uh, their system running too hot and thus uh, causing various problems. I know personally when I was much younger I had eczema on my face um, from getting pneumonia not too long before that and that was a result of my lungs not uh, being able to breathe properly. And uh, when I start, first started experimenting with uh, tonic herbs I jumped right towards ginseng because that's what everyone uh, that's the one herb everyone knows about. And in doing so, it was a little too hot for my system right then. I hadn't built up much jing at that point. I was already uh, had previously had my own health crisis, healing crisis, and um, going to the ginseng actually made my uh, eczema break out on my cheeks after I had been gone for quite a while. So I learned that I had to put those aside for the time being and just really focus on building jing. Now some other people might have the opposite. They might have tons of jing, and they're just not quite feeling energized enough. So the the place where tonic herbs or chi tonic herbs come into play is when you have that substantial amount of jing energy and it's like a candle sitting there that's either got a really small flame or it doesn't have any flame. You want to light that flame and you want to make that flame to a decent size where it's burning steadily but not over burning but not under burning. So that's the whole purpose of taking chi tonic herbs. And the final category which is shen tonic herbs is, uh, again, it's situated in the head, and this is the most spiritual, or has character building qualities attributed to it. So, again, going back to the metaphor of a candle, Jing is like the foundation, Qi is the flame, and then the heat and the light and the warmth that's given off by the candle is uh, what Shen is attributed to. So this is the final uh, treasure, and it's the result of having everything in, our, in balance below it. Most people have certain goals in life that tend towards being successful, being spiritually aware, being happy in general, being joyful, and this is the culmination of what Shen offers. And a lot of people falter on their path through life not getting there quite because they haven't brought Jing and Shen, or Jing and Qi rather, into balance first before trying to bolster Shen. So practices that work with Shen are, of course, any spiritual discipline is going to increase your Shen. But again, we want to have the foundation before going too in-depth into any sort of practice that might be uh, pulling us out of the, the everyday world, so to speak. Um, so some of the organ systems and bodily processes that are attributed to Shen are the heart, the tongue, the small intestine, and the emotions, as well as the brain, the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, and the uh, all the aspects of yourself that aren't physical organs, such as your, your willpower, your radiance, or your beauty, your wisdom, and all these character traits that can be built and refined and uh, directed through practices on itself as well as specific herbs. And just like I've mentioned herbs for the other two categories, or th two treasures, the herbs that target the Shen qualities in yourself are things like Reishi Mushroom, Albizia Bark, Shizandra Berries, Shadavari, which is also known as Asparagus Root, Gotu Kola, Holy Basil, of course, Poria and Polygala. And these are all, um, some of those specifically do target uh, Jing or Qi, but they do have strong Shen building qualities to them. So in conclusion, I'd like to mention that the three treasures, or the three doshas, or uh, any other trinity system, or system that incorporates a triad, that is 
symbolical in its nature in terms of what it represents, what each of those characters represent, can be used as a method, or rather, it can be applied to more than just herbs and the systems, organ systems of the body. Like I mentioned earlier, you can use this as a categorization system to look at the other aspects of your life, whether it's exercise, lifestyle, um, your interactions with different types of people. And we can see that, obviously, there are different exercises, such as meditation, etc., would be better for Shen. Uh, more vigorous exercise would, again, be better for building the Qi. And then other exercises, again, such as uh, bodybuilding, for instance, might be considered Jing-type exercises because they're building muscle mass, which is building a storehouse of, uh, of energy and uh, power. So that's just one example of how you can use this metaphor that's been given to us by these traditional cultures that extend far back into our, the history of our species. So I hope you can take this tool and use it in your own life as any way you see fit to examine your lifestyle and uh, look at p which parts of your way of being in the world might be deficient or which parts you might have, you might have overemphasis on and uh, I hope it serves you well.